Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of tools and features that are really important in Procreate if you want to create illustrations. I am planning on doing a full app overview where we look at everything in the app, but I'm just waiting on a few things to happen before that, mainly the new version of the app coming out. But in the meantime, I thought let's still look at the main core feature in a very practical way, so while drawing this really fun, simple ice cream cone right here. And I'm going to do my best to show you as many tools and as many features as I can. So in every single step, there's going to be something different. So make sure you watch until the end so you don't miss any of the tips and tricks that I have for you in Procreate today. So we're going to start by setting our background color. And for that, we're going to access the layer panel, which is here at the top. And we are going to simply select the background color layer that is automatically created when you create a new canvas. Now, the only thing you can do on this layer is pick a color for the background. So you cannot move the layer, you cannot delete the layer, you cannot draw on it. You can really just pick the color. Once you have your background color, you can click on the plus icon at the top to create a new layer. And if you tap on the layer, you're going to have the layer menu, which is going to let you rename your layer. You can use the keyboard option here in the bottom, or if you have the Apple Pencil, you can just write on the layer. So I'm going to rename mine to Sketch. Now, in order to pick a color to draw with, you're going to select the little circle here in the top right, and which is going to open up the color menu. I'm just going to go with gray because for the sketch, it doesn't matter. We won't see it in the end. Now, Procreate comes with a lot of really wonderful brushes. And if you're a beginner, that's totally fine to start with. For example, in my tutorials, I always suggest two brushes. One brush is a free brush that comes with Procreate, and then I suggest a second brushes that might help people get more professional results and save some time. So you always have two alternatives, at least in my videos. And in this case, for the sketching brush, if you want the free option, you're gonna go in the sketching panel and pick the HP pencil. Otherwise, I'm personally going to be using brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, which I will link in the description below. As usual, it is always with a special promo code for the YouTube people, and I will be picking the sketching brush from this bundle. So in general, when you're drawing an illustration, it is always helpful to try to break down the main shape in multiple basic shapes. So here, we're going to break down the top and the bottom in two squares. Now in Procreate, when you draw something and hold your pencil on the screen, it's going to smooth out your shape. And then if you tap with another finger, it is going to create a perfect shape, like in this case, a square. And when you create a perfect shape like this, you always have this edit shape option here that appears before you do anything else. So if you start drawing again, this is going to disappear. But with this edit shape, you're going to see these little handles which are going to allow you to change the shapes. So in our case here, we're just going to turn our square into a trapeze, which is going to be really helpful to draw the top of the cone. So once you're done, you can just tap on the arrow icon here and it's going to bring you back to normal. And we're going to duplicate this shape here. And to do that, go back to your layer menu, swipe your layer towards the left and then click duplicate. You see you're going to have an exact copy of your sketch layer. Now make sure that only one is selected and with the arrow tool, you're going to be able to then move it around and even rotate it using this green handle here. So you're going to rotate your trapeze until around 180%. It doesn't need to be exact. You just want to basically look like it's flipped and then you're going to position it so that it touches the base of your top trapeze. So that's all good, but now we have two layers and it's not necessary in this case. So you can just merge your layers in Procreate by squishing them with two fingers. And you can see now if you go back to the arrow tool, you can move everything around. And since we have our basic shapes, we're ready to start breaking them down and to add more details to make it look like ice cream. So just quickly adding a line at the top to mark the top part of the cone, then maybe refining the bottom part of the cone to make it a little bit thinner. And then moving on to adding the swirls. Now for the swirls, I have a tip for you. Whenever you're drawing something that is wrapping around, you want to avoid just drawing, you know, individual little lines like this. It is going to make it look quite incoherent usually. So in your sketch, you want to draw the entire spiral, even the parts that would be behind and that we won't see in the final result. That way you just can make sure that all your lines and all your curves actually make sense and would connect together in real life. Now you can see I don't have enough room in my canvas to draw the little whip top, so you can just use the arrow tool if that happens to you as well. Set it to uniform so that way you don't change the proportions and then you can use the little handle to resize and reposition your sketch. So whenever you don't have enough room for something, you can always just move your sketch around. 
And here we're going to refine the sides of the swirls, so just adding some little C curves to connect everything as opposed to just straight lines. So something like this, nothing really crazy complicated. So just do that on both sides and then don't forget this little bottom part here as well. And then at the top, all you have to do is draw a wave shape. So something like this. Now at this stage, we're ready to start adding the colors. And for the colors, I personally like to change the blending mode of my sketch layer to multiply. Now I'm not gonna get into all the details about that, but if you click on the little N right next to the check mark, which right now is an M, you're gonna have a big menu. And I am gonna pick multiply, which is the one at the top, and then I'm going to lower the opacity, which is this letter right here, around 50%. It just allows us to see what we're going to draw a little bit better instead of having the sketch being super intense. Once that is done, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to rename it, <laughs> if we're able to, to ice cream. Now we're going to drag this layer below the sketch layer. So you can just do that by dragging it literally <laughs> with your finger. And basically without getting into too many details about layers, think of it as a stack of transparent pieces of paper. So the layer that is on top is going to hide what's on the layer that is below and so forth. So here we want the color to be below the sketch, otherwise when we start drawing we're going to hide the sketch and we won't see what we're doing anymore. So you can pick any color ice cream you want, I'm going to go with just white, so vanilla ice cream. And in terms of brushes, you can use in the airbrushing panel the hard brush, which is probably the most basic brush you can think of. If you have the illustration bundle though, go ahead and pick the base round brush. And here all we're going to do is we're going to outline the ice cream part so that later we can fill it in in just one swoop. And don't hesitate to zoom in to refine some areas. You can also use the eraser tool, which is really helpful. And you can also add even more details. Like here you can see I'm adding drips. So just drawing a few ovals and then that's it. And one really important thing to know when you're drawing in Procreate is the way to undo and redo. So undo is with two fingers and redo is tapping with three fingers. So super easy. Once you have your outline, you can just fill them in by dragging the color onto the shape, making sure that the outlines are fully closed. So if there's a hole in the outline, it's going to fill out the entire canvas. Now we're going to do the same thing for the cone. So creating a new layer, putting it below the ice cream layer so that the ice cream hides the cone and not the other way around. And you're going to rename this layer to cone. <laughs> for some reason, I struggle with that, but there we go. Now in terms of color, you can pick whatever color you want for your cone. I'm just going to go with a pretty boring, traditional brownish cone. But as usual, feel free to use any color that you want. And now, just like for the ice cream, we're going to outline the basic shape. Now for the bottom part here, you might want to draw a curve as opposed to a flat line. And again, you can hold your pencil on the screen, which is going to smooth out the curve and just make it easier for you to draw a nice curve. So again, once you have your outline done, you can just fill it in by dragging the color onto the shape. So something like this. And at this point, you might want to hide the sketch layer, just clicking on the little check mark here so that you can see what you're working with a little bit better. In my case, I'm noticing that the base of the cone is just a little bit too thin, so I'm gonna thicken it like this, really simple. And I'm also going to change the top shape a little bit to make it look like the cone is going behind the ice cream, like this. And also I have this obvious little thing here, so I'm just going to erase that real quick. There we go. Now let's look at how to add a second color on the ice cream like I have in the example. So for that, just start by picking the second color that you want. I'm going with brown for chocolate. And then you might want to reactivate your sketches so they can see the swirls. And we're going to create a new layer above the ice cream layer, and we're going to tap on it to activate clipping mask right here. Now we don't need to rename it because we're going to merge them later and the name's going to disappear anyway. But basically everything we draw on this new layer here is going to stay within the shape of the ice cream layer below it. So that's really helpful when you want to draw details and you want it to stay within a shape. Masks are really, really great. And we're going to use the selection tool, setting it to freehand and activating color fill. Now this is going to allow you to draw your section that you want to change the color of. So in my case here, I'm just drawing little C curves on every swirl and then just connecting it to close the selection. And you can see once you actually close the selection, since we have color fill activated, it's going to fill the selection in brown and it's all going to stay within the ice cream shape that we have at the base. And once you're happy, you can just merge your layers again, just using two fingers and squishing the layers together. Oops, <laughs> that didn't work. Just like this. 
We're also going to use a clipping mask to add more details on the cone itself. So creating a new layer above the cone like this, we don't need to rename it again, but we need to apply a clipping mask. So here we're going to add this little crosshatch pattern. So just color picking your color by holding the finger on it. It's going to set it as your color here and then you can make it slightly darker so we actually see what we're drawing. In terms of brushes here, you can use either in the sketching panel the um, HP pencil or the 6P pencil. I recommend the 6P pencil, it's a bit thicker. Or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the outline brush. And now all you have to do here is just draw some checkered patterns. I like to have mine a little bit curved just so that it looks like it's a curved cone and not just a flat surface. But here we're not really going for realism anyway, so <laughs> feel free to experiment and get whatever you like. And once you're happy, we're going to clean this top shape here. So that's the beauty of having something on a separate layer is you can just go in, use the eraser, erase these lines without worrying about erasing the color on the cone itself. So super helpful, really neat, really simple trick. And for now, we're going to keep them as separate layers so that we can move them around a little bit later. But yeah, <laughs> don't worry about it for now. You might want to lower the opacity of your sketch even more until you can really just barely see it because in the next step, which is right now, we're going to add some outlines. So create a new layer above the ice cream layer and we're actually going to rename it to details because we're going to create a white outline later in the process so, so we don't get them confused. Just rename this one to details. And for now, you can pick really any color because we just want to know what we're doing. Later, I'm gonna show you a way to quickly color your outlines so that it matches different sections of your drawing. So for now, I'm just gonna go with a fairly dark brown, which you're gonna see in a few moments was not dark enough. And all we're going to do is we're literally just going to outline the entire piece. So no rules here, nothing complicated. You just want to outline in as fewer lines as possible. I'm saying no rules, nothing complicated, and then I'm telling you what to do. But in general, it's just a good idea when you're trying to do some line art or some outlines to try and do the lines in fewer separate pieces as possible, if that makes sense. So for example, here you can see the top of the cone. I just did it in one line, although it was going over the drips. Because that way it's easier to make sure that one part is not going to be higher or lower than the other. And then you can always just go in and erase the line where it shouldn't be. And with that, it's time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and comment basics. I know it might be strange, especially if you're new on the channel, but we've been doing this for months now and it's really, really cool. It gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys. But the most cool thing about it is that it allows us to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel, especially for me, because you guys know me in the sense that you see my face, you hear my voice, but I have no idea who you guys are. So whenever you leave a comment, I get to see your name, sometimes even your face. And again, it's just wonderful to see the community that we're building here. So go ahead and comment basics and then we're going to keep going. So once you have your outlines, the sketch is not essential anymore. So we can just go ahead and hide it really easily. And you can see here, the reason I said you should not necessarily merge your cone layers together yet is just that you might want to erase this little part that might be poking out after doing your outlines. So once that is done, you can actually go ahead and merge these two together. And we're also going to merge the ice cream and the cone together so that we have just one layer with the main art on it. So like this. And that's going to make it way easier to add some shadows. So go ahead and create a new layer above the cone layer, but below the details layer and rename it to shadows. Now this layer is also going to be a clipping mask on the entire cone. So just tap on it and select clipping mask. And we're also going to change the blending mode. So tapping on the level N, this time we're going to pick linear burn. You could also go with multiply if you want, but I prefer linear burn. And we're also going to lower the opacity for now around 50%. But we're going to come back and tweak it later. Now, both of these blending modes are great for shadows because they make your color look darker. And in terms of shadows, I personally like to go with a purplish gray as opposed to just a pure gray because it makes the color look much more vibrant and less muddy than going in with a pure gray. So I recommend you do the same. Now, in terms of brushes, you can stick with the 6B pencil, but if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the basic texture. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw some more little C curves on the swoops, uh, swoops, swirls, <laughs> on the swirls like this. 
making sure everything is really well connected and then connecting it outside although we don't see it because it's outside of the clipping mask it still creates a line which is then going to allow you to fill in your shape now you can see here you have this color drop threshold here at the top and if you move your pencil towards the right it increases the threshold and if you move it towards the left it lowers the threshold so you want to find a balance here that is going to allow you to have a high enough threshold to cover as much of the area as possible without it filling the entire canvas and you're going to see what i mean in just a few seconds so i'm going to draw some real quick shadows on the cone as well so you might want to do the same and then we're going to color drop the color oops <laughs> not not over there in here and you can see here my threshold is too high so it's filling in the entire canvas if you just hold your pencil and move it towards the right at one point it's going to only fill in your selection and you can always go back manually to fill in any gaps that there still might be you might also want to go in manually for some smaller shadows so in this case here i just want to add some shading around the drips so that would be really hard to do which is drawing an outline and then filling it in i prefer doing it manually like this and like i was telling you you can always go back and change the opacity of your shadow layer like mine were way too intense so i'm just going to lower the opacity experiment see what i like and end up probably going around 30 percent but now we really have an issue with our detail layer because the colors just look so off on our outlines so we're going to fix that by recoloring the outlines and to do that you can just swipe your details layer with two fingers towards the right which is going to activate alpha lock you can also manually activate it in the layer menu and now everything we draw on the detail layer is going to stay within the shape of the outlines that were already there which means you can go ahead and color pick a dark part of your ice cream, make the color even darker, and then just brush over your lines to recolor them really easily. So you can repeat the step with all the different color sections you have in your piece. For example, here, I'm gonna color pick the shadow on the cone, make it darker. For some reason you can see here, it doesn't show up on the, um, the video. So <laughs> could have made it even darker. And we're also going to do it on the white part of the ice cream, so just color picking the white. But you can see when you color pick white, gray, or black in Procreate, it just gives you the red color option. So you can just move that around. In my case, I want my white to be a little bit more of a cream color for the outline as opposed to a pink color. So that is what I'm going to select. And then same thing, just brushing over the outlines. So as you can see now, everything looks so much better with the details being coherent with the colors that they surround. So we're also going to add a white outline around the entire piece, making it feel a little bit like a sticker. So go ahead and create a new layer below the cone layer and rename it to outlines. So this is why the other one were renamed to details, otherwise it would have been confusing. And you're going to pick a solid white as well as going back to either the hard brush or the base round brush from the illustration bundle. And here, all you have to do is literally just outline your entire piece, but it is quite easy since we're drawing on a layer that is below the cone, you don't really have to worry that much about your strokes. As you can see here, they're kind of being hidden by the cone layer. So as long as what is outside of the cone looks good, you're good to go. And don't worry too much about, for example, this little point here. You can always go back with the eraser to tweak the shape and make it look good. So you can always alternate between the paintbrush and the eraser to make sure that you have an outline that you like. To make everything pop even more, we're going to add a drop shadow like this. And for that, we're going to go ahead and actually duplicate the cone layer right here. So just swapping the layer towards the left and then clicking duplicate. And we're going to make sure that we pick the bottom layer. So not the one that has the shadow applied as a clipping mask, otherwise it's going to mess up the clipping mask. So selecting this bottom one here. And we're going to drag it below the outline layer. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to select a similar grayish purple that we use for the shadows. It doesn't have to be the exact same, it doesn't matter, we don't need to be precise. And we're going to double check that in our selection tool at the top, the color fill option is still activated. So yes, it's still there, we're good to go. So we're going to select the cone pixels basically, so the color on this layer by just holding two fingers on the layer, which is going to select, like I was telling you, the entire cone. And since we still have color fail activated, we can see when we exit the selection menu, the entire cone is all colored in our grayish purple color. 
Now we can change the blending mode of this to linear burn again, lowering the opacity around what you lower the opacity for your shadows. And with the arrow tool, you're going to be able to move this cone layer around, which is going to create the drop shadow. So that's really cool. That's a really neat, fast trick to create a drop shadow. You just duplicate your layer and then recolor this entire layer with your shadow color. And you can always go back to the opacity and just play around with it until you get something that you like. Now, if you want to move everything around, it is really helpful to group your layers. So just swipe them towards the right. And then you're gonna have this group option that shows up at the top. And you can collapse the group by clicking on the arrow here. And you can also rename the group to just make your file so much more organized and neat and easier to navigate. So now that you have the group, you can just use your arrow tool and move everything in just one easy way. And you can also resize everything very simply that way. And you can also go back to the individual layer just by opening the group by tapping on the little arrow. And if you want to learn more the basics of digital art as well as Procreate, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to give you a bunch more tips. But just before that, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.